This episode of the Old Dogs REI Network is brought to you by Mino Studio. Welcome to the Old Dogs REI Network, where cash flow is king. Real estate investing, the means, so you can enjoy your retirement dreams. This is the show where we cut right to the chase. No sales pitch, no long monologues, just simple how-to real estate investing advice, so you can earn the passive income you need to enjoy your retirement today. And now, your host and chief old dog, Bill Manasero. Old dogs, and welcome to Fun Facts Friday. This is our once a week, only on Friday show, where we have special episodes not featuring guests, where I will share tricks, tips, terminology, and techniques that will help skyrocket you to real estate investing success. Today's topic is the virus and what can we do? Well, I know that's kind of a heavy topic here, and I know that uh, you are seeing more than your share of media um, on all aspects of uh, coronavirus or COVID-19. There's a lot of talk also in the in the real estate community as well as well, what what's the impact going to be? I mean, already we're seeing the impact on the economy. We're seeing zero interest rates, a, a new Fed low here. Um, things that are just crazy. We've seen the stock market dips that are uh, uh, that are more severe than any previous dip in the market. Uh, and, and yet, uh, we're not officially calling it a recession as of yet. There's a lot of things that are going on. And I know there's a lot of you out there that are dealing with just the day-to-day -day stuff. If you're home from work, um, hey, you know, uh, <laughs> well, you can join me. I'm home here. And uh, and I think, uh, you know, there's a lot of good stuff that we can do. I, I think regarding the impact on the industry, specifically real estate investing, uh, there's, there's just a ton of stuff out there. But I honestly feel it's kind of too early to judge the impact. Uh, I'm feeling it. Uh, I have Airbnb units, as you guys may know, and I'm starting to get cancellations because uh, they're in Indianapolis, which uh, is a sort of a headquarters for um, all kinds of conferences and sporting events and other activities that are going on there. And uh, a lot of the folks that were booked um, for the units that I have were folks attending those events. So I'm starting to get the cancellations in. So I'm, I'm feeling some bottom line impact. I'll tell you, this is one of those times when I'm saying, uh, I kind of wish I had more, uh, you know, long-term tenants in those, in those rooms <laughs> instead of, uh, instead of the, uh, the, the ones that kind of come and go with the uh, Airbnb, but, uh, you know, it kind of balances itself out. And I'll find out more as time goes on. I think first off, you know, we won't know a lot until the end of sort of Q1 here and uh, and maybe not even till end of Q2 or into summer before we really can understand the uh, the impact on the economy and and uh, a lot's just going to depend on how long the virus acts. Um, you know the good thing about being in real estate is people still need a place to live. Now, granted, there may be those of your tenants uh, who are being impacted. Maybe they're they're not working and uh, because they're not working they're not going to be able to pay rent uh, there may be other issues there that you may have to deal with um, but uh, right now I think a lot of people are focused on on their homes and what's happening in their own homes and uh, making sure that their their own family is okay and taken care of um, I know there's not a lot we can do about it I mean yeah we can wash our hands and we can um, you know, we can try to limit our, our socializing with other people and um, and so forth. You know, I, I think that we're in a position where we actually do have influence over a number of people if we have renters or we have guests in our Airbnbs or what have you. So there, there are people that uh, are using our properties uh, for either their you know, their homes or, or as a place to stay at, uh, for short-term rentals. So... Uh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of looking at this in a little bit different, uh, you know, one, I think, yeah, there's, there's a lot of things that can happen economy wise. And I think, uh, we do need to be, uh, 
resilient. I think that the, the good thing about real estate is that it is. I think the sectors that might be hit uh, probably would be student housing because so many of the schools are, are closing down. Um, senior housing, they're also maybe uh, may affected in that area as well. Um, but I think as far as really drawing any kind of conclusions right now, um, I think the main thing is just... Uh, you know, staying focused on, on what you have and, and dealing with that and trying to manage that as well as you can. Um, I think that, you know, one thing that uh, for me that I, you know just kind of came to me as a realization as a lot of people are asking me, what, what do you think is going to happen? What's going to, you know, what's going to happen in the rental market? What's going to, you know, and, and none of us really knows at this point, this could be a very short lived thing. It could go for a lot longer and we don't really know and i think at this point uh you know we need to be diligent we need to stick with what we have i know we're going to probably have to uh, reduce expenses where we can as we have vacancies or we have other issues that may pertain to our our rental properties but there are other things that you can do too i know that um it's kind of hard to to think of that because we're you know we're also looking at our our investments we're looking at the stock market if you have 401k's or your retirement funds and you just see them just go boom you know just down that uh, the one thing that i learned when i was in Haiti i was in there the whole time when i was uh, during the recession and uh, my, you know, I had a lot of money uh, invested in the stock market. I never touched it. I just, you know, never did because we were tied up with so many things that were happening in Haiti at the time. And I, I mean, I honestly didn't even know about a recession. We were kind of cut off from a lot of things. But um, it, it was weird because when I basically, when it was all over and I finally you know, started looking at the, oh my gosh, you know, I've got this, uh, I've got this account, um, my, or my IRA is. And, and as I looked at it, things had come back up and it did take a few years, but uh, they did all come back up. And, and there were a few that disappeared and to companies that didn't survive, but overall, you know, the, it was intact. So I think, you know, panic selling is really where people get hurt the most. I think there's also something too. I think that we need to know that this is also a really good opportunity for us uh, to uh, one, you know, you're, if you're home and your kids are home, you know, you have an opportunity there to really spend some time uh, and some good valuable time with your family and, and being able to spend some time together. I would recommend doing that, taking time, you know, get out the board games and, and, do some fun things with the kids uh, before their schooling, you know, goes online or whatever they might have to do to get uh, school back in gear. Um, you know, maybe just spend some time together, just uh, sharing. I think it's a good time to get on the phone too and, and to talk to friends and family and call people that um, that you know to to see how they're doing and to check up on them. And and uh, if you know, you know, older people especially, um, or you have relatives that uh, you should uh, check in on and see if they need anything uh you know those are those are the kinds of things that we could be doing this is a, a great opportunity to make a difference here and that's by uh you know kind of taking our eyes off of just our own stuff and our own issues here and and looking at those around us that might be um in need you know sometimes we can get so hooked on this sort of the 24-hour news that's going on uh, in every aspect that I, you know, I think you just kind of have to take your phone and just put it on alert if there's something real critical and uh, if that news item hits then you can check it out but to, just to have the news going you know 24 hours while your kids are there and you're at the house I, I just think is just not the best use of your time if you're a landlord and you've got tenants, you know, do you have any elderly tenants that you need to check in on or have uh, your property manager check in on and see how they're doing or if they need anything? Um, or how about those that are your tenants that whose jobs are, are threatened or, or possibly they're losing money because they're they're told not to come in and uh, they're not getting paid for the time off? And uh, um, you know, how can you help? Is there things that you can do? And I and I, I know we're, we can't especially if you have a lot of tenants, you can't really uh, be expected to, to do 
be able to help everybody, but you can look at re- reevaluate some of your you know, your processes and some of your policies and see if you have some flexibility to help those in need. We were talking about the virus uh, with a, a good friend of ours. We're over in Haiti. We had a lot of interns that used to come out and uh, others that would assist us, that would join us as part of our missionary team. A couple of our friends, uh, uh, Alicia and her husband, Lucas, um, good friends we've known for a long time. And they came over to to Haiti uh, right around the earthquake and, and just wanted to uh, just wanted to serve. And they literally you know, quit their jobs in the States and, and came and lived there. And they were a young couple, just got married. They uh, were just amazing help for us and uh, did just all kinds of great things to help out our, our efforts there. But we were talking to them and they're back in, in Southern California now too, like we are. They've got a family and uh, they're growing their family. I was just really moved by Alicia. Lucas is, is working and it's, you know, he's, He's in a tech area, so he can work a lot out of his house. And uh, she's got, you know, three uh, beautiful little kids and another one on the way. And um, when she told me what she was doing, you know, uh, um, to help out with the, the you know, the virus and, and what's going on is that it just blew me away. And uh, she really thought of, you know, how can we combat the fear, the anxiety and the uncertainty with love and that's really what uh, what they did is they she went out there with her three kids in tow pregnant and very pregnant and she walked up and down the street went door to door with rolls of toilet paper okay i know it sounds crazy but she just went door to door and she said hey do you need any and and she just it would was handing these out with a little note she had sat down and written little notes there that if they are you know having any trouble or they need somebody to run an errand for them that she'd be happy to do i mean here's a lady who's got three kids of her own she's pregnant with another one and she's offering to do this and when she shared the story she's kind of reluctant to share it with us but when she shared it with us I was very moved and she started crying and I, you know, my wife asked, you know, why, why are you crying? And she said she felt like she wasn't doing enough. And it just really humbled me because, you know, I, I, I think I, I had just, <laughs> I had just come from the market, you know, where I was waiting in, uh, in line for 45 minutes to get into the supermarket to go in and buy, you know, groceries and, and, kind of dealing with that and all the emotions of the people in line and all the, the stuff there. And, and just kind of just, it's so easy to get wrapped up in your own issues here. But I, when I heard this about what she had done, I was just like so blown away. I, I thought, you know, you know, really, this is a, this is a crisis. It's an international crisis and a global crisis. And, and the, you know, you know, we just tend to be so sometimes focused on on what we want, and I'll be the first to admit I was guilty of that. So I, I just, you know, just kind of really caused some, some uh, me to do a little soul searching here and to pray and to really look at, you know, what 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 can I do? Is there anything I can do? I mean, I mean, besides wash our hands and and try to limit the contact that we have with people. But there are, there are some true needs out there. Um, there's this organization, for example, called Direct Relief. And uh, they are um, looking for people that are willing to pay the shipping price to send uh, equipment, masks, gloves, and gowns and things to China, who's you know, deal, trying to get this thing stabilized right now over there, uh, even shipping oxygen uh, concentrators and things of this nature. So they're looking for people willing to, to actually you know, ship these items. And there's other parts, not just China, but other parts of the, the world that they don't have the supplies. I found out about this organization and uh, they're, they're, I think they recently bought 500 oxygen concentrators um, and uh, they're committed to uh, distributing these to, to places in need throughout the U.S. as well as in, uh, in other countries. So, um, that, you know, that, that's one thing. 
I'm going to have links to some of these things just so you guys look, but we're home with our kids and some of us, you know, our kids are grown up and maybe it's our grandkids, but you know, we're an example to them. And um, if they just see this, you know, the, the sort of the stuff that kind of comes out in ugly situations like this too, or it seems like people are being greedy or people, I'm going to get mine. I'm going to make sure I get toilet paper. I don't care. You know, I mean, we, we just kind of, you know, sometimes take, take a step back. Um, there's a great organization I'm sure you guys have heard of called Meals on Wheels, which delivers meals to older people. It's a great organization. And um, they can use a lot of volunteers right now and people helping them out. And, uh, uh, you know, the seniors are super susceptible right now. And, um, and those, you know, I'm sure I'm talking to a lot of seniors out there too. And, um, but there's some older than us that are, are really having a, a, a tough time out there. And uh, that's a great organization that you can get involved with and volunteer for. And there's a lot of good organizations out there too that are that are doing things to help out. I mean, I know that uh, you know Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. They just uh, committed 105 million um, to, uh, to to fighting uh, the the virus. There's a lot of great, great organizations out there. And, uh, you, of course, you don't have to be a billionaire to, to contribute. Uh, there's a, a Charity Navigator and Charity Watch. Um, that's where our organization, Child Hope International, is listed. You can go and you can look up organizations that are specifically in this area that are trying to address the outbreak and do some some good things. There's the Lutheran World Relief, Heart to Heart International, and Doctors Without Borders. We worked a lot with Doctors Without Borders in, in Haiti. And I think there's also something called the Center for Disease Philanthropy that uh, also has uh, suggested donations and so forth. Uh, um, even a group called WASH uh, that's... that's uh, emphasizing water sanitation and hygiene then there's local food banks Uh, americans are emptying the shelves of stores all over the place and because of this uh, you know a lot of the the food banks are are suffering and we don't think about that because we're kind of looked at looking at you know filling our own cupboards but there are those that depend on these food banks there's a whole bunch of different groups out there um Feeding America. It's a network of like 200 food banks um, and, and 60,000 food pantries and meal programs nationwide. They have a, a response kit that they they're doing for COVID-19. Uh, so there's um, there's some some great opportunities there. They're also looking for volunteers. If you maybe don't have the money to to put into it, but yet you you have the time, you could you know, donate to help out some of these organizations that are trying to help people out. Also, the American Red Cross is urging people uh, with healthy healthy people who can donate blood that as the fear of uh, coronavirus is out there, there's been a low donor participation and it could really harm the blood banks at at hospitals and people that are going to really need it in the time ahead here. So um, that's something you might want to look into too. And and then there's just the, the homelessness. Now I'm in Southern California, California is just overrun with the homeless problem right now. And these folks, that they don't have access to showers. And, and even if they do, some of them don't take advantage of it. And, and so uh, there's a, a group, I believe it's the National uh, Healthcare for the Homeless Council. You know, they're trying to get washing stations set up and things like that that can help the homeless so that they can not be a part of the problem, but can help uh, eliminate the problem too. There's also the National Coalition for the Homeless also is uh, that wants to set up these hand washing sh- stations and so forth. And and so, you know, as we kind of are dealing with it, you know, from a financial and economic standpoint, we're looking at all these, the, the impact of the virus. Um, you know, maybe it, it'd be a good thing, you know, while your kids are there and you're there, that this could be almost even a family thing. And I know they're, they don't want, you know, folks to be socializing too much, but maybe, you know, you guys can put together food boxes or, or one can go out and see if they can find toilet paper out there and do like Alicia did and walk around and, and just see if there are people that, that need toilet paper or they need something basic, or maybe they just need a, a you know, a ride. There's a lot of elderly people who, you know, need to still get to their doctor's appointments or, um, you know, need to pick up or have somebody pick up medicine for them. Let's maybe, you know, look at this thing uh, a little bit differently is in terms of uh, not so much, you know, what, what, what people can do for me, what's the government going to do for me? What's everybody's going to you know do for me? And let's look at what we can do for those that, uh, 
that are also in need at this time. So that is it for today. Um, I will have links in the show notes here that you can access to some of these groups. I'm sure there's plenty more out there, but uh, just a few there that uh, that might be uh, something you could do as a little family project or, or just uh, you and the wife or, or you and the husband or whoever um, as, a, as a means to be able to, to help out those in need. I normally say right now, cash flow is king and real estate investing the means. But I think I'm going to put that aside. I'm going to say that, hey, you guys are the kings and queens out there that can really make a difference in other people's lives. Maybe we need to focus more in that area today. So thanks again so much for listening and may God bless. Thank you very much for visiting the Old Dogs REI Network. We would greatly appreciate if you would stop by iTunes and let us know what you think of the show. We would love if you could subscribe to the podcast, give us a five-star rating, and write a review. The more ratings and reviews we receive, the more visible the podcast will be to others. Thank you.